I am here with the one and only Dave Lombardo, who's world famous. You've been in Slayer right now. You're in film and also... Phantomas. Phantomas. Blade Runner with John Zorn and, and Bill Laswell and various other projects, yes. But tonight you're putting artist to your title. Yes. And it's a very unique thing that you've got going on. Can you tell us how you created these artworks? Well, uh, they were, it was a collaboration with a company called Scene 4. They've done this... Uh, uh, medium of art uh, um, with other drummers, but I took it to a different level. I had a drum set that was a Vista light. It was clear uh, since we were using lights. You know, we were able to photograph through the drum set, and um, I had more input on the, the pieces that were chosen and the colors, uh, you know, the saturation, you know, and, and, and the different uh, settings that we were able to, to create these pieces from. So, um, it was a lot of fun. I mean, it was something different for me to be a part of. And you said you like to do a lot of the dark stuff. Yeah. <laughs> in my last, uh, I guess you would call it a symposium, my uh, art presentation, I, I said, the devil follows me. You know, he comes, he comes out, he comes through me in one way or another. Like one of my pieces has a 666 that for some reason appeared and Jigsaw from the the movie Saw Three, he appeared in one of the images, and uh, it's kind of odd, you know. I, I don't know. I, I love dark, uh, moody music. I love soundtracks. You know, I was just listening to Insidious Three ah. that I worked with uh, Joseph Bishara, and I was able to listen to the track, the tracks that I worked on, and I worked with Tyler Bates uh, with Dawn of the Dead and Californication. So I've been a part of, you know, this kind of music and and i'm very much attracted and and of course slayer which is evil and dark as well <laughs> well they used to be it's just some style that that i like it's a style that i love so when you're playing for these portraits uh are you playing a song or are these drums no these are solos these are solos and when they were photographed i made sure to fill the entire uh screen you know the the photographer would show me what he what he, he just took, and, and, and I said, okay, well, let me do this again, and I'm going to try to elaborate a little bit more, be a little more theatrical. And um, that's how, you know, we came up with these pieces. Now, you've been in the music business for a few decades. A few, yeah, that's it, three. Yeah. <laughs> three decades. Few is three, right? <laughs> yeah. There's an argument where there, okay, there's a couple, there's a few. So few to me is three. Exactly. Right. Three decades. Yes. And we know that, you know, the way fans get music is very different from records to CDs yeah. to MP3s now streaming. But how has it changed behind the scenes, like, as far as business and contracts? And well, I mean, that's probably the same. Uh, but, you know, the process in which we record music is different. Uh, now it's recorded onto a computer. When I recorded Rain and Blood, I recorded on tape. So those were one take. Those songs, you know, we didn't put them through any type of beat detective or any type of quantizing. I mean, all those songs back in those days, all those albums up to uh, Seasons in the Abyss, you know, were recorded on the tape. So technology has changed. You know, it's a little easier for drummers now. All a drummer needs to do is probably play two bars of a rhythm or a beat. And, you know, the, the engineer, you know, copy paste. Yeah. That, and, you know, it's not real. But do you record that way? No. I no. So. <laughs> I, try, I try to keep as much, like, for example, the last album I did uh, with film, I recorded everything. And there were 12 songs, and I recorded them all in one day. Wow. You know, you, you have to be well rehearsed when you go into a studio. You were saying before that maybe contracts really haven't changed much since the beginning. But so you don't think it's harder for new bands to get their foot in the door? I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I've been lucky. I, I've really been lucky uh, in, um, in my career. You know, Slayer, I was 16 years old when, when I pulled Carrie off the lawn. And, uh, you know, when I first met him, he was, he was watering his grass, you know, in the front lawn. I heard that he was a guitar player through other musicians I was working with. So when I approached him, you know... Uh, one thing led to another, and, you know, we were very uh, focused in what we wanted to do and where we wanted to be, and you know, we would uh, put flyers in high school lockers because <laughs> nowadays uh, the schools are closed, so you can't get on the campus. But back in those days, you know, the campuses were open, so we'd go in there with a stack of flyers and put in every single locker, and that's how we would promote shows. We would drive down the street with, uh, with Carrie's friend that had a... Uh, a PA in his truck or, or some type of a megaphone 
Slayer performing at uh, <laughs> the UAW Hall, you know, blah, 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 this date. And uh, that's how we promoted street, you know, street team. But we were our own street team. So I, I don't know. It, I think things have changed. Maybe uh, kids aren't as creative as they used to be. You know, we tried our best and we you know, forged our own path. So this art gallery is going to be around till September 6th here at Avenue A. Oh, awesome. And uh, where else can we pick up? Can we pick up the artwork online as well? Yes. Yeah, you can go to DaveLombardoArt.com, and you can order the pieces there. And um, let's see, and, or, or you could find it here in New York City. Wendigo uh, Productions. Wendigo Productions. Thanks to Wendy here at uh, Wendigo Art Gallery, right? Is that where I'm at? Yes. <laughs> Dude, I don't know, man. It's a blur. Yeah, I woke up at 3 in the morning this, you know, this morning over in, in L.A. time, and so I've been awake since, uh, which is all good. I'm not complaining. I love my life. So uh, bring it on. Oh, you just reminded me of a question I have to ask Uh-oh. you. Here we go. So uh, it's my theory that uh, Latino drummers are the best. Well, there's the a Cuban lot. Ones. I don't the Cuban, I, the Cuban ones. The Cuban ones. <laughs> uh, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of like, well, the Cubans got it from the Africans. And, dude, the African drummers, I mean, they are the, you know, that's the roots of, of rhythm and roots of drums. Um, island music helps you understand, at least Cuban music helped me understand rock music. So understanding Latin music made rock music easy. So then I was able to take rock music to a different level when, you know, in a band like Slayer, I was able to, obviously, the drum rolls and everything became unique and different. Uh, so to say that we're better? No. I mean, that's kind of, that's not cool to say. I mean, there's a lot of great drummers out there um, that are not, you know, uh, um, you know African or, or from the islands. Uh, but we are unique. We are unique, and we do understand music or perceive music in a different way. Yeah. Well, very cool. Thank you so much for your yeah. time. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. We have a really great show for you today, guys. It's got everything to do with Slayer and also Fear Factory's new music video. So good stuff coming up. It's going to be a really great show. But you know what? Let's go inside Duff's, you guys, and get the party started. Yeah, I heard they have beer there.